It's Friday, May 1st, and it's time to grow. We have recently been talking about the values of Jesus that uh, we can imitate so that we can be followers of Jesus, or we've, as we've been calling it, an apprentice of Jesus, so that we can make sure that we're doing the will of God. And the first week we looked at, or the first session, excuse me, is we looked at humility and how an apprentice of Jesus has to begin that relationship with, hu with him in humility, recognizing that I need to be an apprentice of Jesus. And then secondly, we talked about vision, that for us to really see uh, our lives take on the values of Jesus, we have to see a vision of what that might look like. And I think it was Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 11 that gives us that greatest vision. And then after that, we took a look at servanthood. And one of the values, one of the greatest values of Jesus is that he was a servant and he asked us to be a servant as well. Um, we also looked at honesty and how honesty is a critical value of an apprentice of Jesus. Tonight I want to talk about being a, a follower of Jesus in the terms of fellowship. That we are to have fellowship with him, and that in that fellowship, that is part of how we develop these values, but actually one of the values themselves is fellowship. And Jesus modeled this over and over and over again. Think of all the times that Jesus had fellowship with people. And especially when he had fellowship with people that, based on the culture of his day, was very unique when he would walk up to the woman at the well. Or one of the stories that I like the best is the story of Zacchaeus and how he had to have fellowship uh, with that tax collector that day. Let me just read a few verses from Luke chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called to him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quickly come down. I must be a guest in your house today. I must be a guest in your house today. That is how important fellowship was to Jesus. And then listen. Listen to what that fellowship did in Zacchaeus' life. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who were lost. The fellowship that Jesus had, and we don't know the conversations that, that Jesus may have had with Zacchaeus in his home that day, but because Jesus had to have fellowship with Zacchaeus. It radically changed his life. And so here's what I would challenge us to think about. What type of fellowship might you and I have that would radically change our lives? Well, first of all, we need to have regular fellowship with Jesus. We need to take regular daily time where we spend time in God's word, we spend time in prayer, and just thinking about even these values that we've been talking about of Jesus so that then when we have opportunity to express those values and actions when we are fellowshipping with people, then we know we're doing the will of God. In fact, let me leave you with this verse, these verses in 1 John chapter 1. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And do not live out the truth. That's what we're talking about here. How do we live out the truth? It's by imitating Jesus and living out his values, including the value of fellowship. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. An awful lot of being about a follower of Jesus is being in fellowship, both with him 
and with one another. And I know right now that concept of fellowship is probably not only a little bit difficult, but maybe even a little bit discouraging because we can't have that same fellowship that we normally do, but we can still fellowship with one another. It may be a little bit more challenging, and so maybe that is the challenge for today. How in this next week, how this weekend, can you find ways to fellowship with other people that you might affirm their values, your values in Jesus, and that it might make a difference in your life and theirs for all eternity? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you did not create us to live as isolated beings. You lived us to be together with one another. That we as Christians are the body of Christ, all of us together. And there is something very valuable and special when we are in fellowship with you and with one another. And so Lord, even though I know that that it's difficult right now, and I want to pray especially for those that may be feeling very lonely because of the lack of fellowship that we're being able to have right now, Lord, would you please... Would you please, by the power of your Holy Spirit, help those people that that are feeling lonely not to feel lonely, to know that you are there. And then also, would you prompt us, would you help us to reach out to maybe some of those lonely people in the ways that we can to to offer our fellowship to them and, and then let your Holy Spirit guide the rest. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can be your imitators and we can be your hands and feet, that we can be light in a dark world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.